All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Legend, Legend of the Galactic, Galactic Heroes, Heroes, episode 31. Okay. All right, y'all. So far, everything is going pretty well, but ominous tones and things continue yes. to happen and intrigue is building. Yes. So, I like that the characters yeah. that are newly kind of brought back into the story or mm -hmm. just newly introduced in general um, are kind of the main key players for bringing about some of the buildup for these bigger plots. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. The stuff that's going on with Kesserling and Fejan is rather interesting. The fact yep. that Schumacher is one that's being plotted and double entendre there into this story this right. way is uh -huh. rather interesting just that oh yeah yeah remember that guy who helped kill flagel uh, yeah yeah good man yeah now but, he's gonna be roped into this whole thing and then we have a wannabe shakespeare right uh Mr. with them. Mr. landsberg and that'll be and kind of interesting i gotta say i really hope we get like an odd couple dynamic you know between <laughs> the two of them because the soldier and the poet yeah exactly ship it already <laughs> Because they are just about as opposite as as two characters can be. Wait, are we not talking about Mittermeier and Ruintal right now? The soldier and the poet? like <laughs> The poet uh, with women and... <laughs> I reject women three times a day. It's it's wonderful. I'm practically a poet at this point. Uh, yeah, but they are they are kind of being upgraded to main character status to replace yeah. Kierheis. Because that, cause that dynamic can't happen if you're, mm -hmm. one of the characters is dead. Right. It's kind of awkward to have the writing go into the, hey, let's show what's inside this character's head. Wait, we need a perspective Why would we? focus. Yeah. Wait, how can mm -hmm. we do that? He doesn't talk to anyone. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Which might also mean that maybe Reinhardt isn't fully aware of all the stuff going on in his head, maybe if he's not necessarily processing it with someone, which means that if he does start down the slippery slope towards dictator, wait, no, he's already oh, wait, a dictator. He's already done that. Towards, uh, towards really, really bad dictator. The, yeah, bad dictator. <laughs> like, well, no, he's, he's like, <laughs> dictator most likely equals bad eventually. The thing is, is that he's so Where focused outward. That? Yeah. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably something where he's going to be more bad to the alliance you know before he becomes bad to his own people <laughs> like, right i don't know why i pointed to my dick when i did that <laughs> dick, because dictator you know. right oh yep. yeah that makes sense potatoes and everything exactly but, um, um we also have some stuff brewing with regards to yang yep. it's still a, a really uh treacherous situation in which if he you know responds to this summons and he ends up you know going back and it gets a little bit dicey uh -huh. who knows what they could do to him yeah or at the very least i would say kind of levy against him right because nothing has really happened mm -hmm. but because of the stuff that's been insinuated by the Fejon Dominion to yep. undermine the trust uh -huh. that they have in him it'll at the very least start something which wow well, I could say what it'd be a cool opportunity for is just to introduce some new characters in the Alliance oh, political sure. sphere. Like non-Trunic have... characters that might be antagonistic to Yang. Right. We don't mm -hmm. have that many since the big revolution that's happened. And that stuff. Is, yeah, so. that's very true. <laughs> we kind of got <laughs> rid of them. Just possible. kind of died, you know? <laughs> yeah. So there's that. But y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. All right, guys, we got ourselves a really good episode here. Yep. We get mm -hmm. a really frustrating plot development <laughs> in that not oh, only is man. this inquiry something that is very much illegal under mm -hmm. the grounds of the alliance, you know, yep. constitution, laws, and what have you. Oh yeah, it is. A, it is a lynching, primarily to you know. It, it's a joke. Oh, it's a joke. It is it's an, an absolute joke. joke. Like, but <laughs> but I do think I do think that the reasons of their not the the reasons of why they're doing this mm -hmm. are not that far off of being a a point of criticism it is something that how they're doing it is right. the is the main mm -hmm. problem yep. but i would say that to have this kind of oversight mm -hmm. well intentioned as it is no 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 <laughs> not well intentioned as it is um it, it is something that i think is good to bring up in mm -hmm. that hey guys by the way the Artemis necklace, you know, is something that was a very advanced piece of technology that mm -hmm. we've seen 
used essentially in another form by the yep. Empire way back when in that really oh, yeah. silly episodic episode. Right. Uh-huh. Um, if it's completely destroyed, mm-hmm. that's something that's just good to remember is there. Right. Because, because but, when Geiersberg Fortress comes in... Now, I don't know if... <laughs> I don't think that necklace has anything to do against a fortress, dude. Yeah, I I'm don't think so I'm just talking about either, it as being but, a thing that it, it, but it's, it makes sieging a planet very difficult. Right. It is, a, it is, at the very least, a planetary scale weapon, and there is a mobile planetary scale weapon that is coming forward. Dude, that's like a, that's like a so, system scale weapon, dude. <laughs> Like, remember, Star Destroyers could hold systems hostage. Right, the right, Death right. Death Star could would just, hold <laughs> multiple systems in, like, well, well, you know. It would, it would, it would destroy right. systems if it had to. So, yeah. so, 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 in this case, that's something that's going to be need to be addressed. But we have Oliviera, which I was very suspicious to where we'd heard the name before. It mm-hmm. was from Trunit, apparently, right. who basically was like, we need someone who's smart. Who can be the person mm-hmm. is to tell us how to handle this? Yep, and that makes sense because yep. Well, of all the other people that were there that were actually against Yang, I mean, c- come on, come on, <laughs> right? Wh- which is interesting because Wang Rui, who opposed the invasion plans mm-hmm. along with Trunet and the other guy, was kind of laughing at this whole oh, yeah. thing. However, <laughs> he was not standing against it, right? Which means on some level that he's kind of. You know, kind of having to kiss up a little bit to Trunit, but he could be an ally in the future. Yep. So that's a good thing. I've but had enough of this bullshit. I, I mean, I'm tired. I'm you tired. Know. You know, yeah. Let's let's postpone this for another day. Mm-hmm. I like that we oh, are man. getting a little bit of extra characterization for characters that we have already seen before, but mm-hmm. we haven't really been introduced. Yeah, to we haven't gotten to know them very well yeah. as much. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing that we got here. Now, but oh my god, Yang's banter with them. <laughs> Yang's banter was amazing, right? It's so I, good. I loved it. I loved so it. So good. Because it's like he's not even really trying to defend himself because he's like, whatever, this is bullshit anyway. I didn't do anything that I needed to be uh, yeah, de- that, defensive that needs about to be, anyway. It needs to be defended, and if they really want to just execute me or whatever, then they'll just do it. You know, well, like yeah, they're not gonna do that. Right, they're right, they're not right, right, exactly. Demote him or something. But you know? but the thing is is that they're not going to care about what I say anyways unless right. I say something that they can use, so I might as well be snarky, you know. Right. Might as well have a little fun here. Yeah. Um, he did, though, spend the good majority of the first day of inquiries just just crushing their <laughs> illogical arguments completely. Oh, man. What I loved was that the things that I thought had a potential, like they had a potential case to be made, mm-hmm. was, hey, hey, you could have just partially destroyed our systems because yeah. I don't know how the systems work. But then right. Yang's like, no, no, the I other really satellites have. Yeah. would have done damage right. to our fleet. It I'm like, okay, good yeah. to know. It wasn't even something of like that would have slowed us down because we would have had to enter through a narrow area. It's like, right. no, 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 the other satellites still would have been able to attack us, right? right. So, so it's like, well, duh, you know, of course you would yeah. have had to destroy them. But then also, yeah, yeah. you know, siege. Well, there was this kind of this thing where. Yeah. We're vulnerable right now to the Empire and, you know... Oh, what do you know? At the end of this episode, we found out just how vulnerable they were to the Empire. Exactly. Because the Empire is here. And I am so excited to see Isurlan versus Geiersberg. That is I, going to be I'm terrified of awesome. Isurlan versus Geiersberg because I think what they're going to do... Awesome. No, I think this is the freaky thing. Is uh-huh. What Yang's going to do is he's going to realize, yeah, we're going to abandon Isurlan. Like, this is a battle where either way, both space stations go down Mm -hmm. and we don't want to lose a whole lot of the you know resources and power Uh of that whole thing happening so what i'm excited to see happen though yeah is um yang's like hey listen this inquiry thing i get it you don't want me to like try and take over anything that's cool it's fine i'm resigning i never wanted to be in this situation anyways there you go you took care of me right you know and they're like good job um can he do that Uh, well i mean I, I suppose that works. Good. Now we'll keep you in house cool. arrest. Yeah. You admit your guilt. <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah, right. But it's like, ah, perfect. You no longer have any military authority, blah, 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 etc. Right? Uh, sir. What? Well, uh, Isolon's been destroyed. Uh, the Empire? They're yeah. kind of on their way. <laughs> With the uh, Death Star thing? Uh, yeah. But what, 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 what are you talking about? Right. Are, are you making some reference to that show or whatever? No, no, this is a real thing. <laughs> hey, Yang. Um... We've always really appreciated your work. Well, see, you know? this is the this is the part that really sucks, though. Uh huh. Is they're going to be like, hmm? We should sortie from the Isolon Fortress. Oh Send God. the entire Alliance fleet. Oh and my it's like, God! Hey, 
rest of my fleet be like, hey, it's gonna take us a while to fuel up <laughs> from the Isolon and stuff. And then Yang they all just be work. like, they could just be like, that 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 that's cool, but I'm gonna go into the history books of 13 months ago. Um, <laughs> when when you did this, it, it didn't work out very well. But um, but Jacob, this is how bad it could be. Jacob, I'm talking like really bad. They're like, ah, mm -hmm. uh, Bucock. I have a mission for you. The Secretary sure. of Defense. We yeah. need yeah. all your people mm -hmm. to go attack the uh, Geyersburg oh, Fortress. Oh, definitely. Yep. Yep. The, the problem... Oh, the, the, the only potential reason of why they, they might get to a point where they don't do that is because they're once, like, the alliance that, could be... A, no, just, no. Well, well, just well, destroyed. <laughs> once that happens, it's like, really? You're going to force us to do this? Okay. We'll go to the Geyersburg. Geyersburg. These guys are bastards and are sending us to die. Can we just like join you or something? Like, I mean, you know, that's I the mean, kind of stuff that doing that, maybe not that exactly, yeah. but that's the kind of stuff that encourages, even if it doesn't happen right there. So, right. you know, um, yeah, it, it is interesting though, how this episode did a couple things to kind of make the empire seem mm -hmm. like more of a potential ally yeah, than like an enemy. Yang's whole thing that he was writing about, you know, even if it's not by the people, at the very least right now, the government it's is kind for of the for, people. Or it's more for the people than ours is. Uh, yes, yeah. right. I think that's that's probably the thing that's the most kind of insidious about this, mm -hmm. is that the difference is that the demo, the, demo, the democratic process of their mm -hmm. government is by the people, but it is not for the people. Now, the manipulation mm -hmm. of the by the people part makes right. it also to where it might not it's even not be even really by, the, by people. the people. But yeah. but I would say it has the publicly. Yeah, publicly, right. It mm -hmm. is very much by yep. the people. And that's why they want to keep this private, because they want it to not be by the people. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. right. otherwise, right. well, but, people are stupid, yeah. but... Yeah, but Yang's little stupid. thing in the beginning where he's, he's saying if you are using your military against your own citizens, that is a sign of um, uh -huh. the end. Yep. It's yep. really, uh, like, yeah, I'm really curious what will happen if he's like, here's my resignation. They haven't even gotten the news yet of the Geisberg Fortress, right? But he's like, here's my resignation. Uh, resignation denied. We really want to pin you for this. Okay. Like, you know, what? No, it's the Commodore. He really, it's the Commodore, uh, what's his name? Uh, they or what have you. Uh -huh. He really gets off on being able to order people of higher rank around. Sure, and he's like, no, but then he'll be a civilian and I right. can't do anything. <laughs> well, well, no, if anything, it just, it just not, it's not the same, man. Like he goes off to his room and he's just like, ah, like I get oh to order God. an admiral around, like, uh, like, you know, like with Trunit's poster, mm -hmm. like in front of him while he's, you know, going to town. Anyway, um... Yeah. yeah. Also, what was nation of simps probably? Yeah. Like. <laughs> what was the what was the deal though with on the uh you know definitely not like death culty kind of like you know skeleton well, seen, mask? No, I know we've, we've seen we've, them before. No, we've seen them before. Yeah. But having the d Terra is my home. We are the Church of Terra kind of a thing. Well, like that's that's how you. Well, no, no, no. But but because like let, let's be real here. They are so used to just doing this and getting away with it. Mm -hmm. How do they get their rocks off? Sure, like yeah, they have yeah. their own cultish that, beliefs. That like, is, that like is he was very saying, true. He was saying, we, yeah. we, he's like, we, there's these, there's these two ditches that you know mm -hmm. we could fall into: dogmatism and fanaticism, right? And that they're kind of they're they're, they're similar, they're very similar. Now, but, now, mm -hmm. what's what's crazy is that we have both already in the alliance at this point. Yeah, and these guys, you know. Everyone wants a family, right? They're just like, you know, we are a part of the crazy fanatic dogmatic group that, you know, has this, you know, invisible goal out there. Yes, Earth, we will find it again. And, and oh, and we will uh, dish out punishment on all the non-believers that abandoned Earth. I mean, dude, dude, human beings will come up with the oh, yeah. weakest excuses uh -huh. just to uh -huh. commit violence on other oh, yeah. people. Well, well, and that's that's one of the things that like it's okay. just that's all it is. So so Ugh. there Disgusting. are with with a show like Legend, that that does things with some of the the side side antagonists like in mm -hmm. Legend of the Galactic Heroes where right. they are grossly incompetent. Mm -hmm. It can go into territory where it makes me lose respect for the conflict of the show because I can't take the antagonism seriously right well 
it, okay. with, but the reason why I think it works so well in Legend of the Galactic Heroes is that one, it's not all of the antagonists that are incompetent, right? It's some of them. Yeah. But and, also, it helps play into the themes and the, the stuff that it's exploring yeah, yeah. of the the human condition and the idea that in these big groups, you end up getting incompetent people in these positions of power, and as a result of that, horrible things happen. Right. Why are they here, Jacob? Why are they here? To grow their character as <laughs> human individuals? No. Hell no. No. Yeah. This is the dredge work. Right. Just, uh -huh. just yep. sinking sludge. Yep. Getting yep. scraped from the bottom of the sewers and Trun it's just like, oh, that stink. That's some good shit. Oh, put yeah, that, yeah. He's huffing put the that in my, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Put that into my military groups there. And, and this has been happening over the last 150 years just for the war side well, of things. Well, so it's, it's had accelerated had plenty of into more recent times because they need more control of the military. Right. So now we have people like Bukak where it's like, Oh well, yeah, I'm the minority, but but like there's I not, represent like not 20 a whole lot I percent of the military, right? And even though I'm being bugged, it's like they know. It's like come on, they're <laughs> like yeah. Oh, and I'm by not the, a threat to them. And they, by the way, yeah, yeah, that vague guy sucks ass. <laughs> like you know, like like that. That was great because I, I've seen plenty of stories where it's the oh no we're bugged you the nineteen eighty four right like right yeah, Big Brother yeah. is watching right. but as opposed to the the more insidious kind of stuff where it's like no it's the yeah that's obvious right right we're being bugged and stuff and that's that's something that I feel like has a closer connection to reality where oh. it's the we're being bugged all the time you know yeah. and it's just but the best way to to keep the bugging happening is to maintain the illusion that you're not being bugged even oh, yeah. if maybe it's totally obvious that you are yep. so things like, like, like you know like you guys want to know something like really just just like in case you didn't know this already take your cell phone take your oh. cell phone <laughs> and start like yelling car companies oh uh-huh yeah yeah just yeah. out yeah. randomly yeah just tons of them oh yeah tons of them just over I mean, and over and over again. This is memed to death, where it's like, you and know, then go and mm -hmm. check, uh, you know, your Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't don't at me. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So like so, like mm -hmm. welcome to the welcome to the reality. Yep. And <laughs> and I and I love the the cavalier way that it's sort of done in this show because it because it's that kind of a thing where you could definitely see that happening in because in in like space opera kind of this isn't space opera this is space military but but in those situations everything is bigger and on bigger scales because it's in the future you know the numbers are multiplied by a hundred and all of that stuff right sure. you know yeah. it's not it's not a thousand people that die it's a, a million that die right you know mm -hmm. things like that right so when you deal with say governmental corruption and things like that yeah why why uh you know why, why not beat scale around that the up bush. yeah why beat around the bush scale that up as well you know we've got we've got moon sized space stations with super laser stuff that's you know warping through space and whatnot so why hold back when it comes to you know the awful things that happen exactly. in government yeah like yeah because in some ways the show can't afford to be this high of a scale and not just mm. accelerate the pacings of certain mm. things because yeah. like it take too long well it take too long but I would say one the show has a lot of story it wants to tell and, mm -hmm. and we can we can understand that yeah it's only got a few weirdly weird enough to say it's only got a few characters that it can really afford at the moment i would say to go into that much nuance with sure for now because mm -hmm. it's still the beginning of the <laughs> right. story yeah. if you think yeah. about it <laughs> like <laughs> like we're probably in like the we're still in act one. you know we're still in act maybe one and a half like like this know. might not be a three act structure but if no. it was yeah definitely we're not. still in act one yeah so i really want to see this professor oliviera kind of have things elevated to a little bit more mm -hmm. of a a true battle of, yeah battle of wits mm -hmm. and uh intellect However, what's going on, though, with the fact that Frederica and her badass uh, yeah. uh, guard guy that was recommended to Yang by Shunkoff, mm -hmm. uh absolutely, like, stellar job of taking down um, uh, that huge group of uh, guys that before, yeah. he got, before he got swarmed here. Um, I don't know if we have his name. I don't think we have his name here on the list either. Yeah. No. 
no, no, yeah. I guess not. Okay, okay, but, but, yeah, but either awesome. way, either way, that was that was legit. Mm-hmm. I I'm glad that Shunkov was like, hey, hey, I got a guy. guy. I got a guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's legit. <laughs> I mean, I like, I can take Frederick, on Fre- I can take on way more people, but right. he's, he's if he did not take that L for Frederica, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, that would have been really bad. Yep. Now, now it is one of those other things where I'm also like, okay, I kind of would have expected Frederica to also be able to fight since she is. In the military. Well, yeah, she but... probably, if she had a handgun. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's like, okay, she can fight, but not everyone can be that badass. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. You know, yeah. it is also something that's a little bit, a little bit weird. Just mm. maybe this is my American kind of thing talking there. Uh huh. But military personnel, even if they're in a government, you know, building of sorts like this. Did they like not do they not carry at all? Yeah. Like even the bodyguard? The fact that he had to grab a baton. Uh-huh. Now, now, what might be the point here is that the reason why is for the same reason those guys didn't have access to sure. guns. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And maybe that's more of a writing thing to be like, well, we don't want things to everything to turn into a shootout. Right, yeah. right. Because uh-huh. That makes things a little bit awkward, mm-hmm. but it also might say some things about how uh, firearms in general oh, yeah. are treated with uh-huh. regards to uh, their current uh, right. society as well, which is its own discussion mm-hmm. that, you know, we're not trying to make but, any comparisons right. to the real world. But here, the idea that but, even in the military settings, which granted there would be situations where it's like, yeah, only the, you know, personnel that are supposed to be the on guard or whatever here have right. that. Sure. sure. But it is one of those things where it's like, mm, 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 makes yeah. it awfully convenient for his exactly uh, cronies. Trunit's, uh, yep is a death yep. cultist, uh, totally not affiliated with him. Uh, mercenary army basically to just go about and do these things I, and it's like oh well they're not a problem it's like i, I think we should allow us to uh open carry in these kinds of si- situations here because these guys are quite a domestic a, terrorist threat. right they are a known issue like yeah and, and until that's an issue just right. just for qualified military personnel yep. above like this you know rank or something and the fact that they don't have that can tie in more to the idea of the the politicians basically controlling the military completely right. and getting in their way a lot and so that only the military that they are okay with their people basically get to do certain things and whatnot cool sure. I randomly had a picture that I would love to see happen at some point where Shankov basically is in one of those situations, right? (laughs) And he gets attacked and he like reaches down his pants and like pulls out a gun. Like, like (laughs) they all just, oh God, well, (laughs) (laughs) like, well, well, right. But you know, Shankov. So what he would do in this situation here is he would fire once above their heads and then they all just immediately stop, drop, scatter, run. But then he looks at one of them. He's like, yeah, no, no, no. And he shoots one of them in the leg. (laughs) And they're like, ah! And his buddy's like, the rest nope, of you nope. can run, but I'm keeping this one. I'm keeping this one. Drag <laughs> them back. Dude, like, depending on how insane and crazy these ones are, mm-hmm. I could see them having, like, suicide pills and everything for, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't think they would, though. I, I don't and think they would. And it'd be really fun to see mm-hmm. Yang's group kind of go into a little bit of the, yeah, Shunkov's going to go do his thing <laughs> in the other room. I uh, know we don't condone these kinds of things, but... Uh, <laughs> Shunkov gets results, and this guy did try to, you know, kill us. So. Shunkov is the kind of guy that I get the feeling lights his cigars with a gun. Like, <laughs> like, okay, he's not that ridiculous. Well, okay, maybe not, maybe not, you know. Well, if anything, if anything, like, he probably talks to the ladies, you know, mm. about kind of stuff like that. But sure. it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a little bit of talk. It's know? all foreplay, yeah. Uh, right, right, uh-huh. exactly. Um... We have Geiersberg here. Uh, that and the the visuals for that were great. That like, was a really cool. Oh man! Thing. Like yeah, the visuals were actually a little wonky this episode. Mm-hmm. They switched animation styles at a yeah for some of like the Fred character stuff, stuff. It looked like yeah. Um, but that was a it was okay. But yeah, the, it wasn't important like high you right. know movement scenes. Right. But Geiersberg showing up looked legit. It felt legit. It mm-hmm. was terrifying. The fact that it now is happening here. Yep. And the fact that they didn't make mention of anything coming along the Fejon corridor means mm-hmm. that this might be the actual distraction. Yeah. Because, because we did not see any of Reinhardt's fleet mm-hmm. yep. here. Because so this might be, if anything, the Yang, please go here. Uh-huh. And then it right. didn't matter whether Yang went there or he stayed in, you mm-hmm. know, Heinesen. It's uh 
oh, crap. Yep. Here well, comes, you know, 50,000 Imperial ships or right. 150,000, you know. One of the things that I remember them mentioning, I believe it was for Geiersburg, which mm -hmm. now in hindsight, it's like, oh, wow, that's a very particular reason as far as why. But when they mentioned Geiersburg, they said that its main battery has a capacity of like 60 or 70 percent of Iserlons. Uh Yeah. I, I like like when yeah, they, when it, they it first is not it. is not as strong it's as not Iserlon. as strong no so so Geiersberg versus Iserlon Iserlon should win Iserlon should win but um what kind of hell hath no fury destruction would be unloaded on both sides and and Iserlon might also be taken out and made un inoperable inoperable right. unsuitable as a defensive system mechanism and or then whatever. Reinhardt's fleet comes in yeah uh, I just can't believe they would like, like think like hey you know Geiersberg can we like sacrifice it in order to just neutralize Isolon? Worth, let's go. Yeah, and then they're like, <laughs> and it's just, it's right. just typical like, like naval battles, but in space, and they're just unloading all yeah, their yeah. crap at each I, other, and then <laughs> Reinhardt's like, do, 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 yeah, you know, while and, they're all and the alliance is that. freaking out. They're like, everyone get to the Isolon corridor, and then meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what would have been a lot funnier? What? Is if Isolon just sort of went through Fejon? <laughs> or, or sorry, Geiersberg went through Fejon? Well, I think that's a distance thing. Also, yeah, something probably. Fejon probably wouldn't agree to. They'd be like, mm, we're okay wait, with wait, some wait, things, wait. but so, that's, that's so, a bit much. So, so you could warp it, like, right outside our <laughs> thing and just declare that you you kind of own us now. <laughs> right. We there's, wouldn't do that. I'm sure there's tons right, no, of like, reasons why that... totally do that. That's right. a really good idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> but, like, I'm sure there's tons of reasons why that wouldn't work, you know? Well, but yeah, because then they, Fejon would ally with the Alliance. Then. Sure, <laughs> right. But, but imagine if they just marched Geiersberg through the other side, and they're like, so Isolon's great, but they went around it, and they have a around mobile... Around it. And they have around a mobile it. almost Isolon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it's just like... We'll just plant that over uh, over Heineson, you know. And just, then the whole sweeping, you know, you know, spiral aspect of the galaxy becomes this thing where then the alliance invades <laughs> the empire, and it's just, it's just literally the Ouroboros, you know, snake yeah. eating its own tail. That that whole scene from one of the movies the, it was, was the it? very first, very movie, first movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But oh man. So, y'all, here we are. Here we are. So thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access. So you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general. You can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. Yep, I wrote a sci-fi novel called Battle Lines. It's super awesome, and it is on Amazon. Link in the description down below. Yeah, so if anything that interests you, we'll see it there. But until then... And we're semblance of sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.